is in there. Sure is. I got here plenty early this morning, checked everything out. Didn't want to get us lost, you know? Do you think there'll be a lot of people in there? Well, maybe, but it's pretty early yet. No, no, let's not go in just yet. Maybe we should yeah. go in and just kind of get comfortable with the room before you do your speech and everything, you know? I can't do it, Colton. I just can't do it. Hey, Misha, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, I could forget what I'm supposed to say and just melt all over the floor. <laughs> well, wouldn't be the end of the world. Well, I guess you're right. Come on. Wasn't it you that said something about wanting this afternoon's ceremonies to be about hope and inspiration? Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, well, you're not going to be very convincing if you've got that frown and that furrowed brow. <laughs> That's better. Come on, I'll okay. make it easier for you. Just hold on, okay? Yeah. We'll be fine. It's them. Come, Come on, on, let's get the story. Oh, please, please. No, please. we got to get the Good afternoon. This is Tiffany Hill reporting to you live from the Port Charles Hotel, where dignitaries are gathering for the presentation of a special award from the World Peace Organization, honoring Port Charles' own fallen hero, Frisco Jones. We're very fortunate to have with us his wife today, a special hero herself, Mrs. Jones. Felicia, welcome. You seem Thank a little you. nervous, are you? Uh, yes, I'm very nervous. I think that's perfectly understandable with all this excitement. Also with Mrs. Jones, we have our own station's Colton Shore, who I understand had a lot to do with cracking this terrorist ring. Uh, I understand that your military service played a large part in this. Is that true? Uh, well, yes, somewhat. But I think the audience would be more interested in hearing about the man we've come to honor here today, Felicia. Well, I'm very proud of him. I think you should be proud of him. You know, most of us had the pleasure of knowing your late husband. Do you think that he would be pleased with this award? Oh, look, is it Colton the most handsome thing in all the world? You know, well, at least he's here. You know, I could just kill Tony for responding to that call at the hospital. Aunt Charlene, Tony is the one that should be being interviewed by Tiffany. He is Frisco's brother, you know. But it was Colton and Felicia that trapped the terrorists now. You know, Frisco and Tony have a lot in common. They're both dedicated to saving the world. I wonder if Tiffany would like me to speak for Tony. Excuse me. Let's see. Excuse me. Uh, Tiffany? Yes, Miss, Tiffany, come it's Lucy. Back it up. Tiffany. We're trying to get an interview here, okay? Thank you. The secret agent, Edward. And a hero. That's why he's being on. Well, it's A hero? J.P. Morgan was a hero. <laughs> Isla, look, it's cold when he's being interviewed. He's my boy. Very much. This is Tiffany Hill reporting to you live from the Port Charles Hotel. Cut. Great. Hit that to Eddie. Bill, see if you can find my earrings. Hey, 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 how are you? Good to see you. Is that is funny. Yeah. Mrs. Jones, I'm uh, Stan Robbins, executive assistant to the governor. Unfortunately, he was detained at the Capitol today, but uh, he asked me to give you his very special wishes and tell you how really proud he is of the work that you and your gallant husband have done for the safety and security of this world. Well, thank you. That's very nice. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Aren't you uh, Lucy Jones? Oh, yes, yes, I am. Why? Well, I'm a reporter, but I was kind of surprised at seeing you here. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I've kind of done a little research on this, and I uh, came up with an interesting item. It seems that Crisco Jones uncovered your, uh, well, should we say, liaison with the murderer, Kevin O'Connor? Almost got you landed in jail. Well, if you had have done your research thoroughly enough, you would have found that that was all a mistake, and it's been forgotten it's in the past. And besides, I am very happily married to Frisco's brother, Dr. Tony Jones, of General Hospital. Oh, well, I guess that, uh, no story then, right? Can't blame you for trying. No, uh, no hard feelings, huh? Do you really think I did all right? You were perfect. Everything that you said was just right. And this is the hard part. The part. And look who's here. Right, looks like you're about to meet the biggies. You all right? You're holding up rather well, honey. Hmm. I'd like to introduce you to some... Uh, 
friends of mine. Felicia Jones, Colton Shore, this is Mr. Lewis Holden, president of the World Peace Organization. It's a great honor to meet both of you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And I also want you to meet a very good friend of mine, General Tom Castle. Sir, pleasure to meet you both. Sean says we can save the taxpayers a lot of money by drafting you two and releasing an entire brigade. <laughs> now, I want you to know, you and your husband, young lady, have performed an enormous service for the world. Now, I know you may have lost your husband, Mrs. Jones, but all of you have saved many, many lives. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to be all smiles today, right? Because if both of us cheer up up there, uh, these two gentlemen are going to be embarrassed. After all, they've asked me to represent the WSB. I think you should know that Frisco felt that he owed a lot to Sean and Anna. Well, a number of us owe a lot to Sean and Anna. The trouble is, most of the information is still classified. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, but they've said we should get the dais party seated so the ceremonies can begin. I would like to arrange that courtroom to fill up on the table. Yes, Felicia. Uh, yes, now, somehow you feel that uh, your life hasn't been wasted, it's been meaningful in some way, I don't know. Oh, don't get heavy on me now. Oh, I'm not... Uh, me? Heavy? Are you kidding me? I uh, just wonder if Robert's going to make it. It's almost time. You know what you're going to say? Yes. First of all, I'm going to thank everyone for coming, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to tell them that I'm going to talk to them about How am I going to get through this? Look, what you want to say to these people is not on these cards. It's in your heart. Just trust yourself, all right? I'm going to mess up. I know I am. I'm going to open up my mouth, and nothing's going to come out. It's going to be fine, you see. Uh, I think it's about time we get inside. Everything's about ready to start, huh? Yeah. I want to talk to you about it. Come on, you. Not today. Hi. I can't believe you. Where have you been? We had an emergency. Well, Tony, you have missed all the television coverage and all the press. They've been here. I don't care about that. Well, you're the one that should be on that stage, not Colton. You should be up there. This is Felicia's event. Get in there. It is for us, the living, to be dedicated to the cause they so nobly advanced. Those words were spoken by Abraham Lincoln. I'm sure that Frisco Jones would agree. I'm Sean Donnelly, and it is my honor to represent the World Security Bureau this afternoon. I was once head of that organization for more years than I care to remember, and also to host today's ceremony for the World Peace Organization. I knew and loved Frisco Jones like a younger brother. But if you're expecting a eulogy from me today, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Eulogies are for tears. And when I drift back in my memories and think of Frisco, the most important thing that comes to mind is his laughter, his uh, <laughs> rather contagious laughter. He was a man who loved living, loved life, Love to laugh. And he used to say to me, Sean, there are three things in life that matter, really matter. God, human folly, and laughter. Now, for most of us, the first two are very, very hard to understand. But the last one, I think we can all survive with that, and that's laughter. In my memories, I also hear another voice that laughed with Frisco, a lighter voice. 
the voice of his wife, Felicia, who was as close to me as if she were my own. And after all, I did give her hand in marriage to Frisco. Now, it is her wish and hope that today is going to be a celebration, a celebration of life and laughter that her husband highly valued. A lot of us in this room have favorite stories about Frisco, and I'm sure we'll be bantering those back and forth for many years to come. But today, it's not for us. It's, it's for the woman who knew him better than any of us ever could. And it's my great pleasure to introduce her to you now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Felicia Jones. When we think of Frisco, we should, um, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I was going to say today. And instead, I think I should have listened to a good friend of mine who told me not to worry about the words because the words are just going to come. And instead, I should just trust my heart. And that's what I'm going to do, trust my heart. I'd like to thank you all for coming today. I'd like to thank all of my good friends and all of Frisco's good friends and everyone who loves us. And I especially would like to thank Frisco's brother, Tony, who is not only experiencing his own grief, but sharing mine as well. And I believe that Tony is every bit as courageous as Frisco was. Yeah, yeah. I would also like to thank the World Peace Organization for this ceremony, or should I say celebration. Um, and there is one other person that I would like to thank, and that is Frisco. I want to thank him for making this world a better place, and for everybody that knew him and loved him, to give them a better insight to the world and for also giving us the greatest gift that he could give us, and that was the gift of himself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, comes the moment that this afternoon is all about. When the World Peace Organization's Board of Directors first started reading about Frisco Jones' last mission, as many of you did through the newspapers, we joined everyone in marveling over one simple reality. A single man, highly trained and motivated, highly skilled, had pitted himself alone against a massive and ruthless organization, and he won. Thank you. Now, thank you. Now, now may I ask, Mrs. Frisco Jones to please join me at the podium. With pride and with great honor, I request that you accept this plaque. And this check in the amount of $100,000. Thank you very much. I've been thinking a lot about this, and this is a very generous plaque. And the money, well, I think the money should be used to keep Frisco's memory alive. There were three things in Frisco's life that were very important to him. And the first one was his family and his friends, and especially his brother Tony. And the second thing was was his work. He used to laugh about how wonderful his work was, and his work was being a cop. And the third thing was, was his music, his beautiful music. He could touch a lot of people with his music. He even said that he could make friends with his music. And so with this money, I would like to endow the Frisco Jones School of Performing Arts. I 
think that this will give young people who love music as much as Frisco did a chance to study as much as Frisco did. And they will be doing the thing that he loved to do the most. Thank you. I think, uh, I think you could lead a uh, two brigade yeah. issue. The guy did. Uh, it's hard these days to find men to grow into heroes. And I want you to know that we think your husband was one of the very best. It's an honor to shake your hand. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know what else we put Thank you. All right. Is that a cue? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, hey, boys. Thank you very much. Just go, General Stan. We'll see you later, Friday. Bye. Bye. I think oh, everybody God. in the whole room is in love with you. Oh, uh, no, they could be so generous, can't they? Well, you've given a lot to everybody in this room, too. Okay, well, I'll, I'll see you. I'll Hello. see you. Oh, right. Thanks for being up here. We're so good. You were so good. <laughs> see? Oh. You were fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> I'll put you there. I'll okay. check the camera. All right. Thank you. Excuse me, Mrs. Jones. We haven't met. I'm Gregory Howard. Oh, it's nice to meet you. I was very impressed by your decision, and I would like to help make the Performing Arts Center a reality. I own a building, and it is uh, truly a very fine old building which I was going to tear down and put up condos, but I would like to turn it over to you to house the center. Thank you. Oh, that's very generous. That's a great way to get started. My pleasure. understand. Look. Excuse me. Why we weren't invited to sit up on... Well, why you weren't invited to sit up on the dais, Tony? It's you not know, fair. Something, you amaze me. 